I'm excited to share with you guys that I have designed my own decorative paper and it is now available in my new Zazzle shop. You can click the card right here or also find the link in the description. In this video, I want to give you a close-up look at the paper and give you a better idea of what to expect in case you've never ordered through Zazzle before. If you're wondering why I chose this route versus through my Etsy shop, I did go over that in a recent vlog on my other channel. You can go check it out. I post there about every other week or so and it's more behind the scenes kind of stuff. If you're new to Zazzle, it's basically a print-on-demand site similar to Society6 or Redbubble where designers can upload their art to a variety of products to sell. I might offer other stuff in the future, but for now, I think I'm only going to sell my decorative paper in this shop. But if you want to explore my designs on other products, I do have other shops. I will link all of those down below. Since fall is approaching, I made a collection of fruity fall patterns, the fruity fall paper pack. Each sheet is printed on the front and back. I wanted the designs and colors to complement each other in case you want to mix and match the papers in your projects like junk journals, scrapbooks, card making. I'm going to use these in my book projects, but I designed them to work for any paper craft of your choice. I plan to upload more collections and designs in the future, so follow my shop and socials for updates and also thumbs up on this video if you like my first collection. Each design has different paper options and I know it can be hard to know what to pick because you can't see it or touch it in person. So I ordered every size and every paper weight so I can give you guys a closer look at what it's like before you buy. Each listing has three paper size options, a letter size, a half letter size, and a four and a half inch option. Keep in mind the design does reduce in size the smaller you go, but the print quality is still accurate and good. There's also an envelope option, and I think there's only one size, it's a number 10, and it's a little bit higher quality than your standard envelope. Now let's go through the six different paper options. First up is the semi-gloss, and you can read through the specs right here. It's the thickest option available, and I would say the front side is a glossy finish, and the back side is more of a satin finish. It has a nice thickness, and I think that would make it a great notebook cover, Maybe for spiral binding, it's kind of waterproof on the outside, even as a divider for three ring binders. There is some flexibility, but it's more of a rigid paper with some durability because of the glossy finish. Next up is the mat, and I've used this in a couple of projects now, and I would say it's a good multi-purpose decorative paper. It's not quite as thick as cardstock, but it is thicker than your standard paper. It has the same flat finish on both sides. It's flexible enough to wrap around bookboard or glue to any other project. And it has a slight textured feel to it, which I like. Then there is the felt option, and this is actually printed on a warm toned paper, so the colors will print slightly different. To show you what I mean, here it is compared to the matte, which is printed on a white paper, so you can see the felt has a different tone. It's thicker than the matte with more of a cardstock feel and a fine art paper finish. It has a nice embossed texture, which makes it feel kind of like a high quality cotton paper, and that makes it feel more like a fine art stationery. I actually got this in my fruity fall pack, and I'm going to test this out in more projects. The recycled option is made from 100% post-consumer recycled content. It's slightly thicker than the matte option, but very similar in feel. It feels durable enough and flexible enough to wrap around projects. The main difference I see between this and the matte is it's printed on a slightly warmer paper, so the colors will print in a different tone. And it has a very smooth finish, so if you don't like texture to your paper, this would be a good option. Next we have the linen, which is a bit thicker than the felt paper. It has a slight sheen to it, not quite as flat as the felt, and has embossed lines on it, which reminds me of a canvas texture. Have you ever seen those pads of textured cardstock at the craft store? It's very similar to that texture. It's thick, yet still flexible enough to wrap around board or fold or glue to projects. 
The site doesn't say that it's printed on a warmer paper, but when compared to the matte, it does seem to have a different tone, so maybe it's printed in a different process, or it does actually have a warmer paper. You might like this paper option if you're looking for something thick with a linen textured feel. The least expensive paper option is the satin. The site calls it a matte finish, but I actually think it's a satin finish, which matches its name. So it does have more of a shine to it on both sides. And compared to all of the other paper options, I think it feels the thinnest. It almost feels like a thick page from a magazine. It also reminds me of a higher quality gift wrap paper. When compared to the matte, you can see there's a slight different tone, not as big of a difference as with the other papers, but it could also be the process of printing is different for this type of paper. Even though I usually don't go for thinner paper, I do think this could work well for a variety of projects. Whichever option you choose, keep in mind the colors may vary slightly depending on your paper choice or the printing process. My personal favorites are the matte, felt, and linen, but it's nice to have all those options so you can pick what works best for your project. And FYI, I've noticed that there's almost always some kind of sale or discount code on their website, so double check for any promotions before you check out. Shipping prices are kind of high right now, even for a few sheets of paper. There is a shipping program called Zazzle Black where you can pay once a year to get free unlimited shipping. Since I order a lot of my own paper, I signed up for it and it has saved me on shipping costs. I'm not saying you have to sign up for this and I am not being paid to promote this, but I wanted to share it in case you plan on ordering from this site often. Based on my past experience, I think Zazzle uses different printers and facilities depending on what you order. So just be aware that your packaging might vary depending on what you order and what uh, fulfillment center it's coming from. And I'm not sure, but this might be the same case for international orders. So far, my paper has been packaged pretty well. I haven't had any damage to anything, but if you do, be sure to contact their customer support because I don't handle any of that since they take care of all the shipping and fulfillment. Probably more info than I needed to put in this video, but in case I missed anything or if there are any changes, check the description for updates. It really has been a dream of mine to design and sell my own patterned paper, so you will be seeing a lot more of these in future videos. And I'd love to read your feedback, especially if you buy this paper, leave it in the comments, and also tag me in your projects. Also, tell me if there's a specific theme of paper you would like to see. I definitely think it would be fun to design different collections, maybe some Halloween paper. Big thanks to my studio support patrons and members. If you are interested in supporting my art and my channel, check out the links below. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss any of my videos, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!